Welcome back to Flatiron Tuning. For this video, I want to take a look at why we put our, a dry sump on our Pikes Peak Hill Climb race car and give you our initial results uh, now that we've put it on there and run it up the hill one time. Um, I will say right at the front that the, the intent was to put the dry sump on and make this video last year, but if you follow our Instagram or Facebook page, you probably know that we had, an, well, for one, that we put the dry sump on, but for two, that we did have an engine failure during testing last year for Pikes Peak. And so basically, the time that we had to make this video got eaten up by putting a new engine in the cars and getting it running again so that we can make the run up the mountain. So I didn't, just didn't have the chance to do it. But now the car is back in the shop and we're going through it to get ready for the 2021 race up Pikes Peak. And so now that I've got the time to do it, I wanted to kind of go back and give you, you know, the, our initial reasoning for putting it on there and what our initial results were, were with the dry sump. Uh, before we dive into all that, I just want to say, uh, you know, if you like the channel, if you like what we're doing, if you, if you like this video, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a ton. And as always, this video is brought to you by Flatirons Tuning. Uh, if you like what we're doing, want to see anything else that we're up to, or if you need any parts for your car, etc., please head over to FlatironsTuning.com. Your support there, uh, we greatly appreciate it, and that's what helps us come back to do this, to make this content um, and, and keep this going for you. So if you got a minute, if you're curious, head over to flatironstuning.com and uh, we greatly appreciate your support there too. So, um, all right, so let's, let's dive into it. The reason we put the dry sump on this car uh, is because we wanted to have the most reliable oil delivered to the engine that we could. Um, if you watch the video that we made with Victor Coons from DM Rally and all the testing he did with the Subaru 10 and 12 millimeter pumps, um, in our initial dry sump video where we kind of showed some data that Roger Clark shared with us about, you know, an optimized wet sump system versus the dry sump system, um, we, we kind of really had a, a pretty clear picture that if we really wanted consistent oil delivery into the engine under any uh, driving conditions, uh, any power levels, etc., the dry sump system was, was the most reliable way to get there. So that was the main motivation for doing that. The reason we put it on now is because we're, we're always developing this car. We want to make it faster by either making more power, by adding more grip to go faster. Like you know, last year we added much bigger and grippier wheels and tires. Uh, at some point we're probably going to play with the aero package to try and get more downforce to make the car faster. All of those things put a lot more side load on the oiling system. And what we, what we wanted to do is to put the dry sump on the car now so that one, we could learn the system and get it reliable, and two, once, once we did that, once we, once we were familiar with the dry sim system and had it working, that should make the engine reliable to the point where if we're not playing with power or whatnot, we can really focus on you know, the, the, the handling, the brakes, the aero, whatever, without having to worry about you know, the engine uh, needing some uh, surprise attention. That was the motivation. Now, you're, you might be saying to yourself, well, but didn't you just have an engine failure last year? And that is true. We did, but it was with the cooling system. We had a coolant hose, I can't remember, it either slipped off or ruptured, but basically a coolant hose failed, which dumped all of the coolant out of the engine, basically all at once. And that's what took the engine out. So cooling has always been an issue with this car too. Um, that definitely got us last year. And so that is something that we're addressing too. That is another thing that we're, we're, we've actually got a plan and a bunch of stuff they're doing to the car to fix the cooling or improve the cooling of it as well. So that's going to be a separate installment. Um, and, and honestly, I mean, the dry sump never faltered. Uh, oil pressure was still solid, even running five minutes with no coolant in the car in anger, which I don't recommend. Uh, do not do that. But um, I, I'd say that probably the reason that the engine lasted five minutes in anger, uh, even with no coolant in it, was because we had such good oiling with the oiling system. So. Yeah, I, again, I don't recommend doing that, but that's, that's the nature of the failure that we had. And it's something, something separately that we're going to address too. Um, but yeah, so back to, back to the dry sum. So that, that's the main reason that we put it on. The other thing that's worth mentioning is, um, you know, we, we've been running an IG competition aero separator on this car um, for years now. But the other thing was, you know, we, we've done a lot of looking at crankcase pressure. Uh, you've seen some of the videos that we've done with that, no doubt. Uh, we know how much of an issue that can be. And one of the things that we've noticed is even with the competition aerial separator that basically has a large vent to atmosphere for the PCB system, we were still using a lot more oil than we wanted to um, in, in, as, as we were driving this car in anger. And there again, that's where the dry sump 
solution seemed really appealing because we have, uh, with this dry sump that we've got on the car, three twin screw scavenge pumps that are basically taking that crankcase pressure and moving it to the oil tank and, and, and dealing with it there. So that was the other motivation with the dry sump is to try and get you know, the crankcase pressure and all the crankcase gases under control as best as possible. Um, and so that was the other thing that, we're, that we were trying to do. So what are our initial results with the dry sump? So in terms of pressure, honestly, I don't think it could be better. Um, a hot idle, hot idle oil pressure, we're seeing 65 PSI consistently, which is, I would say, is pretty much as good as could be hoped for. Uh, the relief valve pressure is set at 105 PSI, and under wide open throttle and in any conditions that we've, that we've monitored, uh, we are seeing basically pressure goes up to 105, the relief valve opens, drops down to 85, and then goes back up to 105. So very consistent wide open throttle driving oil pressures as well. So, so the oil pressure seems to be very reliable, very consistent, and that's exactly what we were hoping for from, from putting this on the car. Um, it's worth mentioning that, that relief valve pressure is very easily adjustable with the system. So if we wanted to move it up or down, uh, it's just a spring and a set screw to, to adjust that relief valve pressure. Um, but, but we're happy with it where it is. Now what we didn't account for is how complicated the plumbing of the dry sump system would be. Um, what we anticipated was you know, putting the dry sump on, that was going to be the biggest complication, and then you know, putting in the tank and running the lines to the tank, that was basically going to be academic. Turns out, not so. Um, as we were putting the dry sump on the car, uh, one of the things that we had a concern about was crankcase vacuum. So again, this dry sump has, that we're using, uh, Roger Clark dry sump, is using three twin screw scavenge pumps to basically pull the oil and crankcase gases from the crankcase out to the tank. And the concern we had is, well, especially at higher RPMs, could we be creating too much crankcase vacuum? So certainly crankcase pressure is an issue, uh, you know, as, we, as we've talked about a lot in other videos. And initially, you start moving oil through the PCB system, but at an extreme, you'll actually cause seals to fail because the pressure will, will push oil or, or bulge out the seals and cause them to fail, and that causes a lot of problems, oil leaks and that sort of thing. But crankcase vacuum can do the same thing. If you have too much vacuum and it's uncontrolled, it can cause the seals to fail because it'll pull air in through them. So then you have you know, dirty, uncontrolled air that's coming in through these seals, and then once the seal is broken, uh, then you, now you also have the potential of creating leaks and, and so forth. So we were concerned about vacuum in the crankcase. The plan that we had was to put a vacuum check valve on the engine, and we had one on order, but last year being what it was, uh, we could not get it in time. And so the kind of the last minute, um, and, and, and I should say too, that this is because with the dry sump, the, the instructions are to basically seal up the PCB system on the, on the crankcase. Um, so the last minute solution we came up with is, well, we have this aero separator that's installed and it's already connected to all these ports. Let's just you know, put a filter on the vent and then if the scavenge pumps get to the point where they would be creating, too much, or creating any vacuum really, it'll just pull in there through this filter and that should cancel out the vacuum and then we don't have to worry about any kind of vacuum issues. Um, you know, and, and conversely, you know, if there was any pressure that it should be building up, the vent, you know, the filter will let that out as well. So we figured that not having our vacuum check valve in, in time, that was going to be our best solution. So in our running, again, oil pressure has been just very reliable. What we didn't realize is how much of an issue the, the ventilation of the oil tank would be. So as the scavenge pumps send oil into the tank, what can happen, because they're sending the oil back with some of this crankcase gases and so forth, is that the oil will froth up and you'll get this foam that forms. So with the oil tank, you know, you're only going to fill it about, you know, two-thirds or so full of oil, and then the top third is supposed to be empty um, to let that oil kind of cycle around, let the foam dissipate, turn, back, turn the oil back into liquid before it goes back into the engine. What we found out when we started testing on Pikes Peak was, in one or two three-minute runs up the mountain in a short test section, we were filling up our one-liter overflow tank. So we had our, our three-gallon Peterson tank that was routed to a one-liter, sorry, one-quart one uh, vent tank that had a filter on it, just venting the atmosphere. And we were filling that up in one or two three-minute runs. Um, the concern was, well, okay, well, maybe it's, maybe it's something to do with the design of our three-gallon tank. So we switched to a two-and-a-half-gallon tank that was a smaller diameter, but a taller tank, and 
we hope there was well you know we're going to have more room at the top maybe a little bit more swirl as the oil is coming in hopefully facilitate getting rid of all this this foam and froth and, and solve the problem and it did help uh, we uh, basically now could run about 10 minutes so maybe three runs maybe four if we pushed it a little three minute runs before we would overflow the one quart tank but it was still overflowing quite a bit um, we made it up the run of Pikes Peak, as you've seen, we were setting a record time, but we did also fill up our overflow tank. So that's why the, one of our big priorities as the car comes back in the shop is to figure out this, this problem. And uh, cannot be more thankful to have the experts of Roger Clark to rely on for this too. Um, we're working with them, we've sent them, you know, here's what we've done, here's what the system is. They've come back to us with a lot of really helpful information as far as, okay, well, this is what you need to do, this is what you should try. This is what's worked for us, and so that's what we're going to do. So basically, everything to do with the plumbing for the dry sump is coming off, and, and we're starting over with, with uh, their expert guidance to, to hopefully fix that problem. So that was our initial results, but then hopefully this next video is going to be detailing what we've done and, and what, you know, hopefully that it was a good solution, and now we can drive the car for much longer periods, if not indefinitely, without having this, this issue with overfilling the... Uh, the, the breather tank with the system. So, um, so that and the cooling system uh, changes that we've got are in store, are hopefully going to be the next couple of videos that you see. So, um, yeah, we're going to end it there for today. Thanks very much for watching, as always, and really do appreciate your support. Um, yeah, it, it's it, that is what helps us do what we do, and it makes it possible for uh, for us to come back and, and make these videos for you. So, we really do appreciate that. Uh, can't say it enough. So, yeah, thanks again. Uh, for everything you guys do and uh, as always stay tuned with Flatirons Tune.